Pavlok na Hern, the provisional government of the Irish Republic to the people of Ireland. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, re having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment, and supported by her exiled children in America, and by her gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland <clears throat> and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long separation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times in the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exilation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to, and hereby claims, the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and the prosperity of the whole nation and all its parts, cherishing all of the children of nation equally, and oblivious of all the differences carefully fostered by an alien government, which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have been brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government, representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women. The provisional government, hereby constituted, will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in the trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who serves that will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumane or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children, to sacrifice themselves for the common good, provide itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Sign on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Tom P. H. Pierce, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, Eamon Kant and Joseph Plunkett. Thank you, Peter. I would now like to invite Lisa Hale of Belfast RNU to deliver RNU's Easter statement. The Republican Network community extends Easter greetings to our membership, supporters and fellow revolutionary Republicans and other organisations. We send messages of support and solidarity to fellow revolutionaries internationally. We pledge to support those who continue to struggle for national liberation and socialism in the spirit of international solidarity. Easter is a time when Republicans across the nation gather in graveyards and at monuments to remember our patriot dead. dedicate ourselves to the pursuit and eventual re-establishment of a socialist republic that so many have fought and perished to attain. Easter ought not only be a time of remembrance, so it must also be a time that we gauge how far we have come in the previous year and where we pledge ourselves to the achievement of our goals in the year to come. In 97 years since an, an exercise in Republican unity took took armed and politically motivated, motivated men onto the streets of Dublin to fight an empire, the Republican movement has triumphed. 
been destroyed, rebuilt itself, tore itself to pieces and rebuilt itself again, more times than we care to remember. If we as prom pragmatic progressive Republicans do not radically change our methods, we are doomed to repeat this cycle of failure again and again. Ireland today Ireland today is an entirely different place than it was 100 years ago. Indeed, it has become all, almost unrecognisable in the last 20 years. The advance of the, of the technology of personal isolation, the breaking down of communities and the growth of antisocial behaviour on our streets has led to a whole new set of challenges, challenges for our movement. Rampant consumerism, encouraged by predatory capitalism, has fundamentally reorientated the, the politics of revolutionary republicanism. The breakdown of our, of our communities has torn the heart of, out of Irish society. The politics of stature has invaded our country and poisoned the political, political elite both north and south. The Green Unionists in Fine Gael led the led coalition in the 26 counties have gleefully adopted the Tory politics of David Cameron. The British colonial administration in Stormont has pathetically opted the right-wing posturing of the Mother Parliament in the slavish implementation of aggressive anti-working class and anti-community policies. This Easter not only marks the 97th anniversary of the Rising, but also the 15th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. The signing of this agreement is the acceptance by once revolutionary polit political grouping caused massive shockwaves amongst our community. Many felt elated, certain, af certain that after so much conflict and loss, a dignified political agreement had been reached. Many others were wary, unsure of what the future held. A small but significant section of Republicanism was absolutely opposed to such an agreement, realising that any such deal was meant to sidestep the issue of sovereignty, not resolve it. The 1998 Anglo-Irish Agreement has been, has, has been a backward step for the Irish Republicans. Its acceptance has left the revolutionary movement in a worse place than it was 15 years ago. Sectarianism has been institutionalised. The 26 county administration signed away their claim to sovereignty with no recoprical measures by the British. The union's veto was further strengthened with the acceptance of the cons constant principle of the doors of Northern Ireland PLC were open to international capitalism to further exploit our working class people. Republicans were sold a myth that any return to Stormy would undermine it from within. We were promised the depolitisation of police and justice and the end of the British Army in Ireland. We were promised the ret retention of the Revolutionary Army fully intact. Republicans were promised a socialist alternative to the failed politics, right wing of direct rule. Even the staunchest nationalist supporters of the agreement must admit that nothing we were promised has come to pass. Constitutionally, nationalists have bent over backwards to keep Stormont afloat. A highly political security apparatus spearheaded by MI5 presides over a heavily armed and aggressively anti-Republican police force. The Justice Department acts in a highly political manner and is little more than a local rubber stamp for, for the wishes of the British Secretary of State. The cases of Martin Corey, Marion Price, Tom McWilliams, Gary Adam are stark examples of this reality. The British Army is back in the skies and on our streets in a covert capacity. Thousands remain in the barracks, waiting to deploy at moment's notice. The Revolutionary Army was destroyed, disarmed and disbanded at the request of Unionism. The politics of direct rule are given a local flavour and then implemented in their entirety. In the 26 counties, the right-wing coalition presides over, over some of the most draconian so-called legislation anywhere in the world. And turning political activists on remand on bogus membership charges or political frame-ups, as the case of Michael McKevitt. The refusal to act in a responsible manner in demanding of the re repatriation of Michael Campbell from his nightmare in a Lithuanian hellhole speaks volumes as regards their concern about their citizens. However, revolutionary republicanism is far from dead. 
while heavily armed British police and soldiers defend their political wing in Westminster and Stormont, armed Republicans are defending Irish sovereignty on the streets and, on, and in our fields. Whilst the political elite in both states in Ireland are implementing poverty and inducing measures in our communities, revolutionary Republicans on the ground, standing shoulder to shoulder with the people, intervene in a meaningful manner on their behalf. The Republican Network for Uni believes that Easter is a time for reflection and is a time to reaffirm our commitment to effecting real and irreversible political change in Ireland, a political change that we will finally cherish all our children of this nation equally.